You mentioned Sam Bankman Freed there and the scam with FTT, the, the coin that he created, and then the shares in the company, of course, collapsed. And, you know, the biggest, one of the biggest shareholders in uh, the uh, company was uh, none other than Tom Brady. So it seems like everything comes back to Tom in a way. So here he is holding this $50 million bag of worms uh, as a result, uh, which, which could extend his career um, you know, even 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 further out than than he has to play. Yeah, he lost. It's an incredible story that we've been covering for years. I bet they just print money. They've been buying stock. Uh, Apple stock is one of their biggest holdings, and it's like all these companies that go around buying back their own stock, right? They borrow money from the Fed and other central banks when it was near zero percent, and they buy back their own stock, and they get a price move in their stock, and the executive stock options go up, and then all these stock buyback programs are starting to fall apart as well. Uh, you know, IBM was one of the first to really kind of fall apart and show negative returns even after all the stock buybacks. But we're seeing that across the board because it doesn't, you know, you're not producing, you're not investing in growth of the company and uh, capital uh, CapEx, right, to make your franchise grow. You're just borrowing to buy back your own stock and then eventually uh, the earnings are depleted and, and, the, and the stocks collapse. So, and we're seeing that now kind of across the board. But these central banks, um, across the board are looking very weak, you know, apparently in response, like the Central Bank of China is buying a lot of gold and you see a lot of money moving into gold. And oh, yeah. They bought 30 tons. That it was reported. Right. Yeah. So there are apparently the, the, the central banks for the first time in maybe 50 years uh, or more aggressively are buying gold uh, for the first time in, in 50 years. And uh, as a way to uh, kind of insulate themselves from what looks like a lot of distrust all across the world between these banks. A bit of a three card Monty game with inflation. So inflation was being kind of hidden and we didn't talk about it, even though there was asset inflation and things in the economy were busting up in price. But we didn't call it really inflation. And the CPI was not moving uh, aggressively higher and there wasn't really any inflation. Even a, a year and a half ago, people were still talking about deflation. Like, how are we going to fight this deflation? You know, we're targeting 2% inflation. How are we going to get to 2% inflation? We need to print more money because they were simply reporting on those aspects of the economy that would reflect the need to print more money because all the people who held assets were benefiting by all the money printing. So it was, what's interesting is that the mass cooperation of financial media to kind of portray these uh, hoodwinks uh, you know, the, this kind of shambolic behavior uh, as financial news. And I think that's one, th one thing that we've done a good job in is kind of like piercing that veil. Uh, remember that in just a couple of years ago, there was the toilet paper crisis. Apparently now we've got the egg, the egg crisis. Eggs are, um, and Collins had a funny thing on his Twitter where it was like, it's a chicken and egg problem where <laughs> the, because you could afford the gas to, for, to cook the egg, uh, but you couldn't afford the egg. But if you bought the egg, you couldn't afford the gas to cook the egg. <laughs> so you can't have both. You can have the gas or you can have the egg, but you can't cook the egg because you can't afford both. So, I mean, the eggs are uh, supposedly the problem is bird flu and uh, some massive die off of chickens. But apparently the truth from the farmers is that the price of stuff to raise the chickens, the feed, the, the energy, everything that goes into it, fertilizers, et cetera, are prohibitively expensive. So the farmers are simply walking away. They're not producing the egg. So the egg is, is a direct result of a breakdown in all of the funk parts of that economy that would support uh, a healthy supply chain of eggs. So at last I checked, Five dollars for maybe a dozen from up from a dollar just 18 months ago. I mean, that's a huge explosion in price. And clearly, uh, eggs are a very fundamental part of, of the food chain. Exactly. Inflation is still moving higher. So that's still going to be a problem moving forward. There's still going to be all these bursts of inflation in various pieces of the economy. And uh, eventually, of course, there's someone's going to have to look over the the horizon to... Uh, at some moment, there being a massive pivot. So there must be some kind of pivot coming where there will be QE, wherever, whatever we're up to, five or six, and the bond buying continues. Right there, um, there probably is no putting Humpty Dumpty back together again with the QE program, right? So global reset, it seems like it's in, in the works.
Um, CBDCs are obviously a mechanism for some kind of global reset. Uh, these international confabs like the World Economic Forum and other spots are organizations and meetings where those types of um, rollouts are organized. And um, I guess given the alacrity with which things are falling apart, this big reset, like definitely 2023, what do you think? There's been a certain resistance to accepting those realities of the deep state and the conspiracies of the central intelligence agencies and the FBI to commit crimes against American people up until now. Do you think at this moment there's going to be a more acceptance of going after these uh, organizations that are openly violating the Constitution and human rights in the United States? So this kind of came into focus during that 2016 period. I remember, uh, you know, thinking that, you know, wow, this is pretty shocking. Uh, with the rise of the Trump presidency, you had folks on the left, the liberals, the Hollywood types come out and start to behave in ways that were uh, inconsistent with how they portrayed themselves as being more open minded. Um, but that seems like it was a cr crucial moment in this development. Now we're at six years later, it's become, I guess you're suggesting that it's become even more uh, pernicious. Back to the technology and the technology industry got co-opted, what we're learning from the Twitter reveals. And this um, shows a depth of, um, of behavior that is inconsistent with what, what you'd expect. And so now the decentralization with Keat and Hole Punch and these other technologies, this is a wave under the Freedom Manifesto Pueblo Adorna is, is involved with that you see really now going to get a lot of support because I guess people are fed up. startling thing about San Francisco is Silicon Valley. It's billionaires after billionaires and the actual neighborhoods where they live are disgusting, right? So that was kind of a disconnect. And you see that everywhere now um, in all major cities. So um, going out to the immediate future, uh, we should look for news pertaining to Keat and Hole Punch, right? Hole Punch, uh, Keat is built on Hole Punch. Hole Punch is the technology. Keat is one of the applications are built upon Hole right. Punch. So, um, so you you're a big bull. A you're a big bull on these two, on, the, uh, on, on uh, what's well, happening there. I'm, I'm a big bull on things like Bitcoin, El Salvador, uh, you know, it to be. So you're done. positive. Yeah, of course. You're feeling, <clears throat> you're feeling the, the vibe. This is fantastic. And that's all we have time. So we're going to wrap it up, but um, this has uh, been an earful that I think people are going to listen to two times or three times because it's chock full of goodies.